we're gonna read now from the New Testament from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 19 Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16 New Testament Gospel according to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16 now behold one came and said to him good teacher what things shall I do that I may have eternal life so he said to him why do you call me good no one is good but one that is God but if you want to enter into life keep the commandments he said to him which ones Jesus said you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What, should I, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor and you have treasure in heaven and come follow me but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions then Jesus said to his disciples assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven and again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, oh, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and follow you therefore what shall we have so jesus said to them assuredly i say to you that in the generation when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of israel and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning and hired laborers for his vineyard Now when he had agreed with the laborers on a, for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I'm, I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. About the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them the wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they received each a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each denarius. Each denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying that the, these last men have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I'm not doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go to your way. I wish to give this last man the same as to you. 
Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Chosen, I mean. Two people that have every right. They are right. And I'm starting from the second one. Early in the morning. In his position. Waiting for someone to uh, hire them. Hire him. So that he can work. Early in the morning as he should. And the kingdom of God is like a landowner who went early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And he called all the people that he found. The ones that were standing and waiting in the marketplace, he took them. He hired them. And there was no one other there. In three hours, he went back out, and he found other people waiting. And he said to them, come as well. The first ones, he offered one denarius. For the second ones, he said, come, and whatever is right, I'm going to give you. Six o'clock in the morning, and they were late, the other ones. But now, come, sure. He's taking all the people that he found. In three hours, he goes back out again. Even more delayed the others. Twelve o'clock in uh, the afternoon, almost. Are you going for work now? I would say, um, because it's mother, uh, foolish rather. They are lazy. But God is not saying this thing because God is not, uh, is not thinking the way we are. And he says to them, come as well. After three hours, now we are reaching three o'clock in the afternoon. He goes out again, and he finds other people that we would think that more lazy. Three o'clock in the afternoon, what are you doing outside? Are you going to just work for three hours? But Christ says, come along. You as well, come to my vineyard and work. And he also goes out. Five o'clock in the afternoon, just one hour left. He says to the guys that he found, he because he found people in the marketplace still waiting. What are you doing? No one uh, hired us. And he said to them, come on as well. And now we have laborers, people that are working in the church of Christ and the work of the Lord. people that have 38 years like me others more than that and others that came to the church just a few days, months or years away um, but because we know that we are in the last hour and that is 5 o'clock in the afternoon and the day is off they we're working from 6 o'clock to the morning, 6 o'clock to the afternoon. 12 hours. Now, he's going to come along and give each one the reward. I would call my steward, start with the first one, I would say, and give them the uh, the price. But rather, God has a different logic. Start from the last one. Why? There, there's going to be an issue. They're going to be scandalized. They're going to be aggravated. That's okay, he says, because his, their hearts need to be out in the open. And we need to know who the tested one is. And now the steward calls the last, uh, the last ones and he gives them one uh, denarius. And now the first ones think to themselves, if he gave to them one uh, denarius for just one hour, He's going to give much more to us. Imagine what he's going to give to us. 
And now he gives them one. And now they are right, but they, they aggravated and they're right to do so. It's, it's logical. Lord, why are you unjust? We've been working all day for you. We were not lazy. Whatever you said, we did. We took on all the heat of the day, and you gave us one denarius. And you gave the same amount to the person that worked for one hour. You are unjust. I'm right. I'm right to judge you. You're not doing things as you ought to. And it's just as against the Lord, but also against his fellow servant. He's lazy. That lazy guy just got a denarius, the same as me. And I'm working from 6 o'clock in the morning without stopping, with all my heart. And he's blessed the same as I am. And he's going to be given the same reward as I am. And I'm working for 12 hours, and he worked just one. I'm right. I'm absolutely right. But the result of him being right is take what is yours and go. You're not worthy. You're not for me. You are not the one that I'm w needing to work for me. Did I understood what the reason of uh, departing from Christ really is. There's a departing from Christ that is because of the carnal needs of a person, because a person can leave Christ because of his desires. But there's also a, dro a reason for being driven away. I am about to cast you out, to throw you out, because God can drive you away Take what is yours and go. You're not worthy to work for me. I don't want you to be one of my servants. I don't want you in my serving. You are not righteous. Because I am righteous, but you are evil. And you don't have the ability to understand my righteousness. You're not you're not able to understand my work. Your eye is evil. And I am good. I'm not judging according to the uh, people's standards. I'm not judging the way you judge because he's right. I know that he's right. He's absolutely right. It's not righteous, it's not just to bring a laborer in my house for him to work for 12 hours and I will also call another one for him to work one hour and I would give to them the same amount. It's not right. But the point now is that you should not judge because you yourself will be judged. Do not pass judgment because you yourselves are going to be judged. Do not see with these eyes. Do not think with your own mindset. Do not take decisions with your own hearts. But instead, say that, Lord, you're righteous. Your works in, are miraculous. And I am worthless, not able. I'm not able to understand. But that's, that's not the mystery. That's not the point. And I'm going to tell you things as exactly God showed them to me. Come here, he said, Lord. Please pay attention to it. I have a son. 
that is now 45 years of age. He is now working for God. 10 years now, 5 years now. He went to Australia. Now it's 2021. And now there is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, from the beginning, 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, out. And now I'm seeing God giving him um, a reward equal to me, even though that I have more years ex of experience. Am I going to be glad or am I going to be angry to God because of it? Are you going to be sad or are you going to be happy if your grandson that was just baptized in water is going to receive the same reward as you? Are you going to be happy or are you going to be sad? Are you going to say that God is unjust? It's not righteousness that you're lacking. It's love that you're lacking. Because to your grandson, you're going to say, please God, thank you God, because you blessed it too much. You blessed it. Bless that my grandson even more than me. We've said this before, of course. Bless him more than me. But what this person has is very important. He is lacking love. But God says and is love. We need to become imitators of God like good sons and follow in love. Are you not happy for your fellow lazy even a laborer that was uh, taken in his work and he was blessed with the same reward as you? Can you just say, please Lord, give him even more than that if, if possible? And I'm asking you now, if you're a mother, you have a daughter, who would you like to be blessed more, you or your daughter? Don't say to me that there's a mother that would say that I want to be blessed more than my daughter. Of course, my daughter, more than me, please, Lord. Why? Because I love my daughter. Useless. Where's useless servant? Where's your hope? Where's your love? Where's the faith that is activated through love? Do you know how that is called? Apart from the fact that it's sin, it's sin, it's also uh, partaking. I'm loving this person, but not that the other one. Why? Because what? Because he is doing what you're asking for. Why? Who are you gonna love more? have the same love to all peoples and I accept everyone as Christ accepts you and I repeat the same love have to all peoples and especially and that's a tremendous uh, message he who judge upon someone else according to his own self he is foolish do you see how good I am? I'm here from 6 o'clock in the morning. You're foolish. I'm not like that one person that came for just one hour, that lazy laborer. You are a foolish person if you think like that. And what does it mean for you to be foolish? You are a foolish virgin from the, from the ten ones you, because you have no love. You have no oil in your lamp stand, in your lamp. And if you have the Spirit, you, you are not being baptized in it so that God may give you from His love. What is the righteousness of God? The answer is love. His love. And His truth. In other words, what are you? You are for eternal damnation. Take it and go. But let us now go to the first one. He's also right. He's very blessed indeed. 
his parents very good. He taught him, they taught him the word of God. He has been educated in the law of Moses because not all Israelites knew about the law. No, only the scribes knew about it. And now he has two great characteristics. He knows about the law. He listens to the words of Christ. And third, he wants the kingdom of God. Isn't he the best of all? He knows what the uh, sin is. He knows what Christ asks for. He's always, he's also asking first for the kingdom of God. Now, Christ says, not ask first for the kingdom of God. Ask from the for the 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 uh, kingdom of heavens, but ask for the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is in on on in us and his righteousness that is love and truth he doesn't say ask for the kingdom of heavens firstly he says and uh, today I may say that this person is a perfect Christian he knows what the sin is and he doesn't act on it he's without a sin he listens to the word of God and he's happy and he's desiring to receive part in the rapture of the church. Isn't he perfect? I would say yes. If my son was like that, my grandson, I would say he is perfect. I would think to myself, I don't want anything else from him. But now God says that you are not. You have a great issue. You are judging according to the flesh. You are not eager to follow me under the uh, circumstances that I'm telling you about to deny yourself, to take up your cross and then follow me. And to Peter he said, Simon, son of uh, Jonah, do you love me more than all these things and all these people? Therefore, what the great secret is, for the person that is perfect, the answer is the person that loves. The person that loves Christ. The person that loves Christ's word. The person that loves his brothers. He loves God with all his power, mind and spirit. But the rich person has nothing to do with these things. He knows what sin is. I know what sin is. I, s I lied. God, please help me. Uh, save me. And my sin is forgiven. I'm listening to the word of God. I'm always here. I'm standing, listening to the word of God. I'm being baptized in the spirit. I'm exalting God. That's good. And my desire is one. To take part in the rapture of the church. And now he goes to the Lord. And he says to him, What else can I do so that I can take part in eternal life? What is the best thing that I can do? And Christ, as he is a simple man, he replies to the things that this person knows about. Call, take on your commandments, and that will be good for you. Keep the commandments. Do not sin. That's what he said. Be beware of, of sin. And he says, from a young man, I'm uh, keeping these commandments from youth. We prayed all day. Uh, we were praying together. We were standing together. We were coming to church together. From a young age, I'm doing these commandments. I'm acting upon them. What is uh, the thing that I'm lacking still? And he said, God, Christ replied, If you want to be perfect, where is your hope set on? In your vineyard? Your workplace? Or your household? And put, putting things even more clearly. 
What are you proud for in your life? Are you proud because you have a very nice car or a very very nice house? Do you sew it around? Maybe because you have a work job that is amazing according to today's standards? Are you proud because you have a good uh, household, good family? Where are you setting your hope on? Are you proud because you are pretty? Are you proud because of your uh, talents? Where are you setting your uh, pride on? What is the thing that makes you exalt God? The thing that you are proud for and the thing that you have set your hope on go and sell it quick because it's going to get you down to eternal damnation quickly go and sell it if you, your hope is set on your possessions your money sell it all all your possessions sell them away not invest them sell them and s give the money to the poor in that that means investment of love instead that's rebecca an investment of love all the camels all of them but i'm just one and he the servant will sit around and will not help for him to just look at her investment of love that is investment of giving out that's what who Rebecca is. And when he listens to it, he is shocked. What are you saying now? My possessions? Selling my own possessions and then give the money to the poor and have nothing for me? The answer is no. You're going to have eternal life because you're going to follow me but now there's faith an investment of love but he also needs to have faith as well and that faith and hope of course I believe in the words of God and God says to me that you need to sell everything follow me and you're going to have riches in heavens Now he is sitting around and is considering and he takes on the decision. A shame I wasn't able to find uh, what I was looking for with Christ. A shame I wasn't able to uh, find peace with my brother. Um, I, de I may say today, I'm going to go. I'm not able to do anything else. But you are, you are able to. You can sell all your possessions. As he was cursed on, he didn't curse back. As he was afflicted, he didn't threaten back. He gave himself, and you need to give yourself to the one who is righteous a judge. With faith and understanding that God is watching you. With hope that God is going to bless you with certainty that God loves you dearly blessed be the name of the Lord but he departed and today I'm telling you again I understood about being driven away from the church not all of them but a part of it take what is yours and go he was thrown away he goes away by himself. He is not able to withstand, sell my own possessions, my power. And now the disciples come along so that God may explain to us, and especially Peter in, in specific. Lord, you say 
the the rich men uh not easy it's not easy for rich men to get into the kingdom of god but we had everything uh we left everything for you we left our jobs our ships our families and we follow you get out of your get away from the house of your father get away from your land and he said god says to abraham depart from your land from your relatives and your the father of your house the, the house of your fathers and I'm gonna tell you where you need to go and there I'm gonna make you a great nation there I'm gonna bless you not in your in your father's house I'm gonna bless you away I'm gonna there I'm gonna exalt your name and you're always gonna be blessed there and there I'm gonna bless the ones that bless you and I'm gonna curse the one that cursed that are cursing you do you believe in that do you believe that if you manage to depart to uh, leave everything behind and Peter says that we did we left everything behind and we follow you then Jesus replies in verse 28 as shortly I say to you that in the regeneration the ones that are that left everything behind and the question is who are you following now says brother and sister maybe you follow your husband do you follow your father or your mother do you follow your wife who are you following your mind like Isaac or Esau the game who are you following a tough question that we need to answer though and it's in every one of us let us reply to the Lord individually it's like God saying to us brother you who are you following a very important question indeed and A, pr a person that I know from a young age and I know his faith and I know uh, his holiness but I'm not sure who he follows that little child let's say who are you following and I'm making this uh, even more uh, specific George you who are you following and I'm talking about myself of course you who follow me says Christ learn that in the regeneration when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands why for my name's sake that's the secret I'm following the name of Christ whatever I do I do it for the name of Christ may God help us whatever I do I'm doing it for your name's sake no, not because I love my wife or because you, the wife loves the husband or because I love my children or my grandsons or because I love the church or because I love the uh, pupil understand I'm doing whatever I I'm doing for the name of Christ please Lord help me so that my heart may be full in of from the love of God but you that followed me and left everything behind house his brothers sisters father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life but a great issue here be aware of that many f who are first that is in verse 30 will be last and the last first 
Esau was the first one, but he became last. Jacob was second, but he became first. He who was working from six o'clock in the morning, he was first, but he became last. He who went five o'clock in the afternoon, but he went. And he hoped he worked for an hour. And he hoped that the Lord, the, the, the master of the field, is going to give him something, the land owner, and he's going to receive something. I'm going to be blessed as well. I may not be like this brother or that brother, but God is going to bless me too. I hope on that. Christ says that you are going to bless you as well. As much as the first person that remained faithful up until now, with the same reward, the same time, with the rapture of the church. My dear brethren, nothing is impossible to God, but there's nothing also impossible to the believer. The issue though is, who are you following? Why are you following the person or the thing that you're following? Who uh, is managing you? Is your wife uh, managing the you? Maybe the past as well. Maybe my father is guiding me. Be aware, you are in danger. Who are you following? Who is taking and managing your life? I want Jesus Christ to manage my life and follow Jesus Christ always. Can you? Nothing is impossible to God. Nothing. God is able to make me as well able to walk and follow Christ alone. Because I love Christ. Amen. I mean.